thank you for introducing me. Thank you for invitation. Hello, everyone. Uh, today I will share with you some information about the biodiversity of the coldest biome. Uh, so the glaciers and the inhabitants. And why do we care about uh, glaciers? So first, oh, something that works. First, glaciers and snow cover uh, and, and snow fields, they cover 10% of land. So they reflect the solar radiation from our planet. Glaciers store 70% of fresh water. So more than a billion people on our planet use the uh, water originated from glacier for domestic use, for crop irrigation, for um, uh, production of the energy. And glaciers, of course, contribute to sea level rise. So we are concerned about the sea is located at the seashore. But what is the most important for environmental biologists, the glaciers are called ecosystems. And it is usually how people see the glacier like a lifeless desert. But uh, for glacial biologists, the surface of glacier is full of life from small uh, single cell bacteria and algae to multicellular uh, invertebrates, like for example, springtails or uh, tardigrades. And very often in literature, we can find information uh, about the impact of the melting glacier on the biodiversity, biodiversity in fjords, biodiversity in streams. So biodiversity of the glacier adjacent habitats. But we should keep in mind that uh, glaciers are home for uh, different organisms and glacial ecosystems are essential to understanding biodiversity response to glacier retreat. Uh, we highlighted it with uh, colleagues interested in the cryconite and glacial environments. And we should keep in mind that the most endangered organisms during the global warming are psychrophiles. Psychrophiles are cold loving organisms. They need for their growth and reproduction exclusively low temperatures. So let me introduce you uh, with uh, supraglacial ecosystems that are located on the glacier surface and they are the most species rich ecosystems uh, on, of glaciers. And uh, the ice surface on the glacier is uh, inhabited by snow algae or ice algae. Snow algae inhabit the uh, snow surface while ice algae literally they grow on the ice crystals. And sometimes during the polar summer, we can see the changes of the color of the glacier. It is not of because mineral dust or anthropogenic contaminants. It is because of the pigment produced by ice algae. The glacier surface, we can find craconite holes. Craconite holes are called the biodiversity hotspots of glacial environments. They are the most species rich and the most productive ecosystems on the glaciers. And uh, they look like a small water filled reservoirs with a thin layer of the sediment on the bottom. And these cryoconite holes, these ecosystems are considered as the one of the most freshwater, uh, most extreme freshwater ecosystem on our planet. And uh, uh, the conditions in the cryoconite holes are shaped by eukaryotic algae and cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria are even called the cryoconite hole ecosystem engineers, and they are the food base for tro higher trophic level consumers, top consumers, which are invertebrates. And together with my colleagues, we tried to answer on the question, what animals can live in cryoconite holes? And we investigated 42 glaciers around the world, and uh, we found that cryoconite holes are mostly dominated by tardigrades and rotifers, but also in some regions, like for example, in Central Asia, cryoconite holes are inhabited by uh, endemic uh, copepods or chironomids. The South American glaciers are inhabited by stoneflies. The maritime Antarctic glaciers are inhabited by uh, mites. And what is important, most of these animal taxa 
a new species for science. So together with my group, we are describing tardigrades from the uh, glacier surface and cryoconite holes around the world. And for example, here you can see of the Adropion afroglacialis. It is a species described from the last Ugandan glacier located on the equator. Uh, afroglacialis means uh, African glacier. Here you can see Pelatobius glacialis described from the cryoconite holes in uh, Svalbard archipelago. And even this small microscopic invertebrates that are 0.3 millimeter in size they host other microbial uh, organisms. And we should keep in mind that component of the biodiversity is bound to other. So by losing of some glacial animals, we are losing also the associated organisms like bacteria, fungi, protozoans that are uh, uh, commensals, symbionts, or parasites. Uh, we are very keen on cryoconite holes and we are really interested in these ecosystems and we used sophisticated scientific instruments for looking for anoxic zones in cryoconite holes. So imagine the world without the oxygen on the ice surface. It sounds like a science fiction story, but uh, after days or even weeks on the glacier surface and the measurements of the oxygen in the thin layer of the layer of the sediments in the craconite holes, we found anoxic zones and it is approved. These charts presents the decrease of the oxygen and you can see that in the Alps, on the Greenland ice sheet or here in the uh, Arctic, below the one millimeter depth in the sediments, there is no oxygen. So it is the anoxic environment. Uh, that was elaborated by my PhD student, Kuba, and is implied for the existence of the aerobic organisms. So even though we consider the surface of glacier as a reaching the oxygen full of the photoautotropic organisms, uh, this surface is also inhabited by anaerobic organisms. So we have both. Uh, organism using oxygen and organisms living in the anoxic environments. And the studies on the uh, anoxic uh, environments on glacier are conducted by our colleague Andrea Franzetti. Uh, here is the next example of the uh, glacial ecosystem. It's a surface of ice in the Alps covered by stones. And again, it looks like, like a, a lifeless desert. But when you pick up such stone, you can see that Hopefully the movie will work. Okay, when you cap such stone, you can see hundreds of small micro arthropods that inhabit the ice surface and they inhabit exclusively the ice. They need the ice for surviving. So uh, for example, here you can see the black pigmented springtails on the ice surface. The next interesting habitat on the ice surface are glacier mice. So here you can see the uh, beautiful Auster-Dalsbrunn glacier in Norway. And this glacier is covered by the moss balls. These moss balls are called in the literature glacier mice. So they are moss particles, moss structures rolling on the ice surface. And these mosses are also host for, they, they also host the uh, invertebrates uh, and uh, uh, other microbial communities. And what is the fat, fate of these uh, glacier mice during the warming? We don't know. They will be transported to the forest field. What next? Uh, we don't know. So there were only a few habitats among many of them on the glacier surface. And even the top of the glaciers uh, uh, located in the high mountains, is inhabited by the uh, different groups of animals. It is the example of the cool study conducted by, the, by Daniel Shen and colleagues on the, uh, on the New Zealand glacier. Uh, colleagues from Austria are working on the snow algae blooming in the open landscapes in the European mountains and uh, other parts of the world. Our colleagues from Japan are working on the snow algae blooming in forests 
on the temporarily snow, on the temporarily habitats. And the snow algae are unique from, for snow and they are a food base for microinvertebrates. So there's also a kind of the extreme uh, cold ecosystems. And why are glaciers in habitat important for us? So at first, they are source of nutrients for downstream ecosystems. So the bacteria on the glacier or cyanobacteria, they are releasing nutrients from the ice and from the mineral grains, and they are try and then these nutrients are transported to the downstream ecosystems. Uh, they start building a new ecosystems in four fields. So the glacier is melting, and the first migrants in the new ecosystems origin from the ice surface. So they start building a new ecosystem. They are pigmented, so they can absorb solar radiation and they regulate albedo of the, uh, uh, of the glacier. So they are also model for studies on the activity of organisms at low temperature. So it is some kind of the astrobiological analog. They have biotechnological potential. And currently we are observing releasing of a new genetic material to downstream and we don't know this genetic material but what is the most important for people interested in the biodiversity and something that doesn't need any justification is that they shared the planet with us and existed long before us it is we can use different justification, but it is the most important thing. And uh, together with my colleague, Dan Shane from Rutgers, we wrote an essay about the uh, biodiversity of the equatorial glaciers. Equatorial glaciers are a symbol of the of the global warming, of the climate changes. And the first humans were living in Africa. They saw the mountain tops covered by snow and glaciers. And the question is, are we the last generation who can explore biodiversity of these glaciers? And can we protect these ecosystems? That is rather very difficult or in my opinion, impossible. Can we uh, can we restore the glaciers? Rather not. So the chances are in the exit to conservation. We can store the biological material or ice cores in different uh, banks, like uh, banks of the ma uh, biological material or ice core uh, banks. Uh, what are threats for the uh, glacial inhabitants? So global warming influence disappearing of glaciers. So they home is melting. Uh, one of the most important factor influencing the uh, current six mass extinction uh, is the habitat fragmentation. And we observe exactly the same on the glacier. They are huge ice caps that are shrinking and they, are, they start to splitting. And uh, whether with the global warming uh, in temperate uh, boreal and, and polar regions, we observe Observe uh, increasing of the uh, freeze thaw events. So even though some invertebrates can inhabit the polar or uh, mountain high mountain regions, uh, and they can survive low temperatures and they can survive freezing, uh, their survivability decrease along the repeat of free stuff cycles. And in the next decades, we will expect much more frequent uh, free stow events uh, uh, in soil ecosystems. So three take home messages. Glaciers are alive. Glaciers are disappearing ecosystems inhabited by unique organisms. And the fate of the sacrifice in next decades requires special attention. Uh, and I didn't have time. So I only show you few habitats on the glacier surface. But remember that also um, organisms inhabit also the inner part of the glacier and they some some uh, anoxic organisms inhabit also the uh, subglacial ecosystem. So under the glacier. Yeah, I would like to thank all fantastic people who helped me from different parts of the world, USA, Italy, Japan, Czechia, Norway, Finland, Ukraine, and of course, Poland, uh, especially thanks my students. And the studies on the biodiversity of the glacial environments are, uh, are supported by a few funding agency and the Team for Sustainable Development at Adam Mickiewicz University. Thank you. Maybe one day Earth will cool down. If not, Keep calm and do not forget about the glacial biodiversity.